it's been a while since I've posted anything or put up any blogs or put up any video blogs. Um, I was going to do a blog, but um, I don't know if you could see it, but my um, RA is flaring along with what I think is a fibro flare. Uh, so typing is really hard right now, and so I'm reserving it for um, schoolwork since I'm in my last semester of grad school. I wanted to do a video today, even though I look like how I look. Um, I look this way because even though I have my heat set at an obnoxious 78 degrees, um, I'm freezing still. Uh, I think part of that is the flare, and so I have a hat on indoors and a hoodie and layers and sweatpants and boots, actually, uh, to keep me warm. So I'm doing a video, uh, and normally when I do videos, it's to talk about social justice issues that uh, resonate with me, particularly body acceptance um, and um, fat acceptance, uh, because that's where body acceptance is rooted in. If you want to do some research and some history, uh, we are standing on the shoulders of giants every time we talk about it. Um, anyway, uh, I digress. Today, I actually wanted to talk about what it's like for me living with a chronic illness. I um, haven't really talked about it because I think that up until really recently, I sort of pretended it wasn't happening. Um, I have seronegative inflammatory arthritis and I have fibromyalgia. So um, that means that I get flares. Um, sometimes my joints don't work. If you see me in the mornings when I get up for the first hour or two, I walk a bit like Frankenstein till everything starts working again. Um, so, and also you can hear my dog in the background. She's kind of an old dog version of me. She's a 10 year old English bulldog and she's also got joint issues and she's cranky and she's neurotic. So we get along quite well. Uh, Anyway, I wanted to do a video today because um, I am struggling with self-care. And I know that self-care has been co-opted by, um, you know, a lot of people trying to sell you things. Everybody's, you know, capitalism is a thing. Gotta, gotta make a living, I guess. Uh, not that I think some of it's ethical, but, you know, self-care is usually presented as like, you know, massages or taking a bubble bath or going to yoga. And none of those things are bad by any means. However, I think it, it discounts that self-care can sometimes be ugly um, or just not sexy. Self-care is paying your bills, making a budget, getting yourself out of bed in the morning so you can get your kid some food and get him on the bus. Um, you know, all of those things are, are self-care, even though they're not sexy like a massage or a bubble bath. And my self-care this week is decidedly unsexy because I get an F- minus in taking care of myself this past month. I'm, uh, like I said, in my last semester of graduate school. Uh, I'm almost done, and I've, and I've loved it. Don't get me wrong, every second of it. But I'm also um, doing my placement, and I'm working as a clinical social worker under an amazing supervisor in a private practice. I also took on the project of doing the program evaluation for a program that they supply to the local court here. So there's been a lot of um, research and data collection and writing and getting all of that done. And that was due, the first quarter report was due this past month. And in addition, uh, my partner, one of my partners has uh, had pneumonia and my son got the flu. So uh, along with all of this, I'm scheduled to take my four hour licensing exam this coming Monday. And I had also, booked a conference I was really excited to attend in DC this weekend where I was attending as a volunteer and I was going with my boss and with another um, licensed counselor in our office and I was very excited and um, my body said enough. I, I had a full client load, I had a full course load, I did all of those things that I just listed all month long while trying to take care of my kid and my partner with pneumonia. and. I ground myself into dust. I overscheduled myself. I saw a mountain of stuff I needed to get done, decided I needed to climb it all, and ignored the fact that I have a chronic illness. And um, my body uh, did the work for me when I wouldn't do it and told me, no, you're done. You're done. So I had a horrible, horrible flare last night. And I don't know um, if anybody who watches these has a chronic illness or experiences flares, but I've had a couple um, that in the past couple of months, I have literally laid in bed and just cried because of the pain. And I, I like to think of myself as a tough person. Um, and so 
it was it. My body told me enough is enough and my brain wasn't listening. So I had to today um, contact my boss and the other counselor and let them know that even though that I had, you know, committed to help volunteer for eight hours a day for two days and then four hours on the, on the third day and then go straight from there to a hotel to spend the night and get up the next morning and take my four hour licensing exam. And my body said no. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating. I'm not exactly a type A personality, but I am really about being reliable and honoring my commitments. And um, chronic illness just told me no. So I just wanted to talk about how difficult it was for me um, and that I'm embarrassed. It's embarrassing because it, it's hard to explain to people that don't have one and how self-care today for me was scary. It was scary telling them that I couldn't honor this commitment. I was scared and, and I'm racked with guilt now. And, um, you know, I think that I think that people should know that, that self-care is sometimes scary. It's scary and it's hard. It's hard sometimes to say no. Um, and so I've got my notepad on too to keep me warm. Uh, and I was, I was really, really worried. And I'm still worried. I'm still worried about the ramifications of not participating in this and not meeting my obligations. But at the same time, if, if I continue to force myself to do this, my body's going to be even worse than just a, a single night in bed where I can't stop myself from crying because the pain is too bad to move. And when it takes longer than an hour for my body to adjust and, and walk in the morning and I'm, I'm in pain today and I probably will be for the next couple of days because I overdid it. I did not listen. I did not listen. And I think there's a connection. There's a connection there and not listening to your body that comes from being somebody who was a chronic dieter their whole life. I, I tried to beat my body into submission and into a shape, into a form it wasn't meant to be. And I haven't learned yet. I haven't learned. I'm still learning. Um, I mean, thank God I'm still learning because it means I'm alive and I'm still, you know, growing. But I obviously haven't gotten the lesson yet because now that I've pushed myself so hard and I've tried to do things that my body was giving me subtle warnings was too much and taking too much of my plate because I have this idea in my head of what I'm supposed to be doing. Now I'm going to be not functioning probably for the next four days until my exam and, and hope that my fingers are working and doing their thing by the time I have to take a four hour computer exam. And I just, yes, Stella, I just wanted to share that with people and that like, you're not alone. You're not alone. And I see you and you're a warrior and you're a warrior even on days when you have to say no, when you're racked with guilt and you're scared and it's hard to feel like you let people down. So, um, I'm going to put some posts in the blog down there for links on, um, RA and on support and on, you know, scary and unsexy self-care and, um, and spoon theory. Cause you know, I'm out of spoons. And so the universe has remarkable timing as do my friends. And I happened to go to the bus stop with my son this morning. I haven't checked the mail in days cause we live in the part of the country that's had that horrible snowstorm. And this arrived today and it so sums up everything. And I don't know if you could see it, but it says too low on spoons to give a fork. And, and that's where I am. And I don't want to get there. I, I don't want to get there. I learn, I want to learn how to better measure my spoons and how to better take care of myself. And, um, you know, sometimes I fail and I've failed, I've failed and it's okay to fail. And I just wanted to share my failure with everybody. So take care of you in whatever ugly way that looks like. Yes. And Stella agrees.